Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. Since I redecorated the workshop, this wall has been looking a little blank, so I've decided to fill it with a few of the things I've made over the years. I think they've all been videos, so you might recognise a few of the pieces. The trouble is, I don't quite have enough and I've got a big gap that needs filling. So what I've got is this old 1960s poster. It's of a Wadkin bandsaw and their factory was based just up the road from me. So I'm going to make a frame for it and fill that gap. First, I'm going to get some 9mm MDF cut down and that's going to be the backer for it. And then I've got a bit of Perspex, so both of those bits need to be the same size. Perspex cuts okay on the table saw if you use a fine toothed blade. With these bits done, I can now use them as reference to make the frame. I've got a nice chunky bit of oak to make the frame out of, but first I'm just going to roughly cut it down to the length I need using the jigsaw. With it cut to size, I can then run it through the thicknesser on both sides just to clean it up a bit. I've got the fence set to 4cm and I'm going to rip down 4 strips. Now I need a rebate for the poster, the back and the perspex to sit. I'm using one of these mag switch clamps to help keep the wood in position. Then I can run it through making the cut. With the first cut made in all the pieces, I can reset up the fence and make a cut on the other side just to remove that waste piece. And that's all the mouldings made. Very simple, but I want to do something a bit more interesting with them later. So now to actually start cutting the frame. So I get the mitre gauge set up at 45 degrees and get a cut made on the ends of all the pieces. Now I can take them over to the backer board, get that put into position and mark out where the second cut needs to be made. This cut's a bit long for the flip stop on my mitre gauge so I've got an improvised stop and then I can get the cut made on the two longer pieces then remeasure and do the same for the two shorter sides. Now I just give all the bits a quick sand down just to remove any saw marks. So not that long ago, I got the new mitre gauge from Banggood and they asked me if I wanted to try any other tools. So I knew I had this project coming up, so I got a set of these mitre clamps or corner clamps. Now I've got several different ways of doing picture frames or clamping them up, but none of them would do a frame this big or mouldings that as wide and thick as that. So let's give these a go. So first I had a little dry assembly and I got the bits in the clamp like this and I didn't have that much success so then I tried them so this is a nice flat workbench I got and like that and that worked much better so I put a link down below to Banggood where these clamps came from now I can get it all glued up so I just get some PVA wood glue put on the mitres pushed together and the clamps tightened up then I just left it all overnight to dry and then the next day I can get all those clamps taken off. I'll get her another quick sand just to remove any glue squeeze out. Now I want to do something a bit more interesting with it. I love the natural look of wood but I also like staining it black and that's because instead of just paint covering it the black stain kind of enhances the grain and you can still see all the details of the wood. Now, you might have seen me before use a lot of India ink. I really like that because it works on pretty much every wood, even like pine, that's very difficult. But I've always wanted to try using iron acetate, and that works well on woods like oak that have a high tanning content. So now, I'm gonna hand back to Matt from two weeks ago, and he's gonna show you how to do it. 
Thank you, Matt. So I've done some research into different recipes and they all basically have the same two ingredients, steel and vinegar. It just depends on what steel and what vinegar. So some use nails as the steel or those uh, wire scouring pads you get for doing the dishes. Others use uh, distilled vinegar or malt vinegar. But from what I can see, you want the steel to dissolve so the finer it is, the better. So this is actually medium uh, wall, uh, wire wall because it's what I've got. And the vinegar, some people are saying that side of vinegar, vinegar is better bit more expensive but it's still cheap so I'm going to try that. So I've got my bit of wire wool that I have washed with some hot soapy water to remove any of the oils on it to help it dissolve in the vinegar. So into a glass kiln jar I'm going to stick my wire wool and then vinegar and I want to make sure it's completely submerged so it doesn't start rusting. So now I'm gonna leave this to work for a couple of weeks. So it's back to you, future Matt. Thanks, Matt. So two weeks have gone by and you can see how dark the liquid is now. Now this is a chemical reaction, so it produces gas. So the other thing I did was I removed this gasket so that it's not an airtight seal. Now we just need to strain it. So I've got a clean kiln jar and I'm using one of those paper coffee filters to pass it all through and strain out any bits. And now I can try it out. So it's a pretty simple process. You just brush it on and let it work. And you can see how quickly it changes. At first, it just looks like a pretty clear liquid, but the oak darkens up incredibly quickly. So I think that's a nice finish and a lot cheaper than India ink. It doesn't take long to dry and then I can start getting this frame put together. So the perspex goes in, then the poster and the backer board. To seal it up, I'm just gonna use some masking tape as I don't have any of the little proper tabs and this will stop any dust actually getting in there as this is gonna live in the workshop. The last job is just to add a couple of brass mirror plates so I can get it attached to the wall. And now it can go up and just fill up that last gap on the wall. I've been looking at some pictures of my old workshop and I saw that my table saw and workbench were pushed together. And I really like that setup, so I thought I'd try that. So moving again, I'm just gonna push it over here and see how I get on. This wall had been blank for a couple of months and it'd be annoying me, but I think it looks much better now with some bits put up on it. And I'm really pleased with the poster. So really pleased how that ebonizing turned out and I think I'm definitely gonna use that technique again on some oak. Pleased with the frame and it's a really cool poster. Table saw works well over here, but it's on a mobile base, so moving it back again will take 30 seconds if I don't like it. I just can't help myself, I'm always moving things around. So, thank you for watching, thanks to my patrons, and please subscribe for more videos.